Production funding for Flying Squirrels Insider is made possible in part by the all-new 2015 GMC Yukon, offering professional-grade design and functionality. The all-new 2015 GMC Yukon, now available at Richmond Area GMC dealers. Dan Doherty at Colonial First Mortgage, assisting customers with home purchasing and mortgage refinancing, online at colonial1mtg.com and by phone at 804-218-4444. And James Limousine, driven to serve Richmond for 22 years. JamesLimousine.com, 804-273-1540. On this week's episode of Flying Squirrels Insider, playoff memories from 2011 with Skylar Stroms, Mo, and Ryan Lawless as the squirrels push for the postseason in 2014. John, Jay, and Wes let you know why the team is poised to make that postseason push. Plus, Matt Duffy visits FSI Field and teaches you how to make the off-balance throw. It's all ahead as FSI primes you for the playoff push. Hey there, welcome to another episode of Flying Squirrels Insider. I'm your host, John Laser. In just a second, I'm going to be joined here at the Colonial First Mortgage Baseball Desk by my broadcast partner, Jay Burnham, and Sports Radio 910's Wes McElroy. We're going to dive headfirst into the 2014 Eastern League playoff push. But a few thank yous and housekeeping notes before we get there. First, a thank you to our local Buick GMC dealers who have provided us here on FSI Field with this beautiful Buick Lacrosse. That's going to be the backdrop a little later on as we welcome our James Limousine Luxury Player of the Week Flying Squirrels infielder Matt Duffy and he's going to show you how to charge the slow roller and make the off-balance throw to first base. As always, we invite you into the conversation and into the show today. All you need to do, pick up your phone and text FSI to 44544 and we're going to hook you up with a Flying Squirrels prize pack courtesy of Opt for cards. With that, I bring in my two cohorts here, Jay Burnham. We opened last week's show by talking about the Squirrels' playoff positioning. At that time, they were up seven games. I asked you if they were uncatchable. They've added three games to that lead. I ask you again. Yeah, they are uncatchable at this point, and I think a lot of people are starting to recognize that. You're up ten games on the third place team. You have a nice, comfortable cushion on the second place team, and the reason being, I know there's ups and downs during the season, but this has been the best team in the Western Division. They've had solid pitching. They've had uh, timely hitting and they played some stellar defense as well. So as you start to see some teams change and shift and rosters kind of move over the last portion of the season, especially heading into the trade deadline, I think this is the team that's going to play come past Labor Day in the Western Division. A lot of teams at this level, Wes, will have what we call Group A whether that be in the starting rotation or in the bullpen, you've got the top side. And those guys will generally get you wins. Squirrels don't have that. They're very strong top to bottom in that pitching staff. They really are. And it starts with Ty Block and Jack Snodgrass, two guys who every night you know you're going deep. Jack Snodgrass, you know you're, you're keeping your runs down. That helps your bat support. And we'll get to a couple changes that will affect the bullpen, but that's another solid part of this team. Uh, but looking at Kyle Crick, who's giving you more innings, I mean, really, it's one through five, and actually in this case one through six, that is giving the Squirrels a chance night in, night out to win. You just saw on that graphic there what this staff as a whole, that's the starting pitchers and the relievers have done in the month of July. Guys, they really went into Akron, took on the second place rubber ducks and strutted their stuff. They allowed just two runs across three games in a three game sweep and that's really what has gotten them this buffer as I'm calling it towards playoff positioning, which allows us to play a fun hypothetical game here on FSI. Usually we play literal games, but it's going to be hypothetical today. Let's say that 
that the Flying Squirrels are an entrant in that divisional round. Who you got on the bump in game one? Game one, I got to go Jack Snodgrass if he's still here for the Flying Squirrels. And you think at some point, we've been saying it on the show for quite some time, can Jack Snodgrass get a look at AAA? Hopefully for him he does at some point. If he doesn't, I want him starting game one for the Flying Squirrels. He's your guy that's been here for the course of two seasons. He's very reliable in what Snodgrass can do. He can also not only win you game one, but he can save you that stellar bullpen for a potential game two and game three. Wes, I dare you to say something negative about my man Jack Snodgrass. <laughs> not even going there. Uh, but when we had this argument, there were a couple different options. I'll let you set the table before I get to my number two. Well, and that leads us to breaking news here on Flying Squirrels Insider. That has not been our forte nor my specialty throughout my career, but just got a text as I was driving over here actually from acting manager Ken Joyce. Kelvin Marte, left-hander, has been promoted to AAA Fresno. He will start for the Fresno Grizzlies this week. We'll get in a little bit to who will replace him in this starting rotation. But Wes, I was going to take you there. I thought in the absence now of Austin Fleet, also promoted this week, that Marte may have earned that game two nod. You go down the line to Giants top prospect now Kyle Crick yeah my argument was all set I was all ready to tell you about fleet at number two and argue with Jay and then I was going to go with Marte and then that didn't happen so I am going to go with Kyle Crick for the fact of what he's done here over the past month he has worked on his off-speed off stuff he's given you more innings the past three outings he's going six innings plus and now taking a look at what you're going to have here at the back end of that rotation another guy who can help your bullpen so that's the guy I would throw in number two and Kyle Crick, I think, has developed somewhat of a moxie now. He's got a swagger out there. It was no secret to him or to anybody else. His last start in Erie was, what did I call it, Jay, a scout palooza? They were everywhere, hanging out from the rafters. They crushed my portion of the media spread. I'm still a little ticked off about that. And all Kyle Crick did was go out and strike out 11 across six innings. And like you guys have talked about, he's now taking you deeper into ball games. Yeah, he is. And if you're talking about setting up a playoff rotation, I think you like the, the, the disparity between what Snodgrass can give you as a left-hander. It doesn't throw all that hard and the right-handed explosiveness of Kyle Crick but are we forgetting in this conversation a guy who was an all-star who started the all-star game in Altoona and left-hander Ty Block and I think what it's going to come down to we can set the rotation as much as we want but I've seen this in the past with playoff with playoff bursts and it's the fact that what the major league team wants to have and who they want to have pitch sometimes is to showcase an additional guy sometimes it's because a guy's missed some time so there might also be an opportunity for a guy like Clayton Blackburn to get additional starts in the playoffs because he missed so much time with injury. And Adalberto Mejia, we haven't mentioned him. He'll also return from the disabled list, and he will also make a start this week for the Flying Squirrels. Might he emerge as someone that you didn't expect to make a big start somewhere here in the postseason push or hopefully in the postseason? Well, guys, let's switch gears offensively. It has not been all roses offensively for this team of late. They continue to win ball games, but not necessarily churning out runs. They've had a change at the top of the order and a spark plug change, I like to call it, in that vehicle. Kelby Tomlinson, somewhere along the line, kind Kind of picked up for Tyler Graham, Jay. How did that happen? Yeah, and uh, for Tomlinson, and unfortunately, unfortunately, Graham has had a little bit of a struggle. We hope to see the, to him to get back to where he was back in April. But Tomlinson, here's a guy that came through last year at the end of the 2013 season, and he struggled. There's no other way to say it. He wasn't fully healthy. Tomlinson has made the necessary adjustments, and I think what's been most impressive for Tomlinson is the fact that he's been able to take the ball the other way, also with a little bit of authority. He had a nice deep line out last night to right field. So he provides that, uh, that spark. He's been able to get on base quite a bit. He's also uh, the stolen base leader in the in the Eastern League. So I think when uh, when the season is over, Kelby Tomlinson's going to look back on this year and say, "Wow, I had a great season in 2014 in Richmond." I'm going to look back and say that too. But yeah. I say that every year. I can't remember how many years <laughs> I've been here at this point. But Wes, let's get back to Tyler Graham because this team was dynamic offensively back in April and May when the 31-year-old had fresh legs and he was really leading the charge. He's had some time away. He's now had a week back. I think he's taken some time to find his groove can he once again energize this offense well I, I believe he can because he has that veteran experience and here's a guy who look baseball is a game of ebbs and flows you get to those dog days of summer he knows about that he knows how to counter that batting 192 in the month of July the big thing about him is the strikeouts have gone up 14 strikeouts and he's only had two stolen bases so first of all you're not getting on base and the only have two stolen base and we all know what that does to the lineup but here's the thing he had the all-star break had a couple of days off for a family wedding, some time away, 
to regroup. He's got that veteran experience. I think he bounces back and has a big August. Well, we're going to get to some of the other guys that might be able to help Tyler Graham. Of course, Matt Duffy has been the constant in this lineup. I say that encouragingly because he's literally staring at me from behind the camera right now. <laughs> he's going to join us here on FSI Field in just a moment. But the key, Jay, and you know you've been with teams in Trenton that have made that deep playoff run. You've got to peak offensively yeah. at the right time. What guys are we looking to get locked back in to make that happen? Yeah, that's funny. I think that's a saying that a lot of people around the league know and around minor league baseball. you got to kind of peak at the right moment. you got to hit that apex uh, uh, when you're going into the playoffs, and I think that goes for a lot of sports. But I think for the Squirrels, the key might be we just discussed Tyler Graham. Is he, he's able to give you an additional shot in the arm offensively. The pitching certainly has been there. And look, we've actually kind of picked apart this team a little bit. Let's keep in mind they're 21 games above 500. They're the best team in Squirrels franchise history. So let's put that uh, on the bed first. But the fact that uh, you've got uh, a, a struggling on hell Villalona, who really hasn't done much since coming back from a, a month long uh, absence due to a shoulder injury. And I think two things unfortunately for Violona is that he was a guy that was really starting to develop. He missed a lot of time with uh, personal and legal issues and now finally starting to hit his stride here in 2014. What could have been a breakout season for him is now kind of him trying to find himself come uh, the, the month of August. So I think if he's able to be where he was prior to the injury, if you're able to get Tyler Graham back to where he was back in April and early May, I think this team has a chance to make a playoff run deep in 2014. Wes, talk about Mario Lison. He's going to come back off the disabled list probably by the time this show airs. Yeah, Mary Luzon, seven-day disabled list, lower back injury. It's something to watch. The question is, is it something to be concerned about? And that'll be something to watch with Tyler Graham's issues. Luzon cranked it up in the month of May and June. He got over his strikeouts, and he was an all-star. So he's a guy to watch. And then I'll give you another guy to watch, and that's Jarrett Parker. He has been a monster, batting 353 after the all-star break. Cut down the strikeouts. He's been getting on base as we record this. Had a big win, a big hit in the game winner of game one against Harrisburg in a series. So he looks to be back. The big thing with Jared is finding some consistency. So Lisone's back, big thing to watch, and Parker's consistency. They're two things I'm keyed in on. And one thing that this team doesn't necessarily need night to night is consistency one through nine. They just need to consistently ham an egg, as we like to talk about on the golf course. Well, I'm going to finish that up and talk about a guy that I think is underappreciated, and that's Devin Harris. Jay, I know you've come to love the guy and the way he approaches his at-bats. He had a little bit of an ankle issue on a ball that he fouled off that ankle, but I think he's going to be back and actually came back swinging it pretty well right from that three-game absence. And here's my X factor. Remember this, viewers. I think he's going to at some point be a big reason why the Squirrels have success, Miles Schroeder. Write that down along with texting FSI to 445-44 on this playoff preview edition, playoff push preview. We still got a month of the season to go after all. But you have to be prepared in minor league baseball and in life. Write that down as well. This is an advice-filled show today, but we need a slogan. Back in 2011, catcher Johnny Minnell did us a favor. Offhandedly, in an interview with me, he just said, hey, we've got to defend the nest. And I said, T-shirts. And we got them made. <laughs> and that was the mantra of the Flying Squirrels all the way to the Eastern League Championship Series. We're debating as to whether or not to use Defend the Nest as well, but we'd like your suggestions as well. So send those to info at squirrelsbaseball.com. If we actually choose your submission for a playoff slogan, you're going to be at the ballpark for all those playoff games. But guys, real quickly as we wrap up this segment, what do you got? I've got nothing. I'm going to shoot the wow, question. Wow, you're the I best of the business. We've, we've rack, I racked my brain on this one, and I think uh, when you look back on it, I, I really like Defend the Nest. I think that has a, a nice, uh, succinct catch uh, catchiness to it, and I think that's what we should go with. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, yeah, Jay okay. says. Wes, do better. This is why you have me alongside of you, because this guy, getting squirrely for September, or you play off the Tom Clancy novel, The Hunt for Red September. I don't like either of those. But how about this as we close the segment? And also, by the way, we welcome back manager Russ Mormon, who will rejoin this ball club as they hit the road for Altoona. The drive in five. Fifth season celebration throughout the year at the Diamond. Simple, succinct, looks good on a bumper sticker and a, as we now know, T-shirt. This is Flying Squirrels Insider from the Colonial First Baseball Mortgage Desk where we wrap up. Matt Duffy is with us a little bit later on, but we come back. We look back to defending the nest as playoff reminiscing from the guys that are still here and were there. That's next as FSI continues. He's Jared Parker the most interesting ball player in Virginia. As it turns out, Jared has no depth perception and is terrible at judging fly balls. However, the flock of birds that live in his hair are tremendous at it. 
and Jared has trained them to whisper which direction he should run into his ear. In a Little League game, Jared once threw out two runners at separate bases with one throw, leading some baseball historians to create the magic ball theory, and others to hypothesize that there were actually two right fielders on the grassy knoll that afternoon. Not all squirrels come from Virginia, but this one does. Stay squirrely, my friends. Recently, I was I was looking back uh, at some different things in my office, and uh, I was texting with Daryl Madey, who's now in Korea, and you know, looking at my 1995 baseball card set from the Reading Phillies when we won the Eastern League Championship. Those people, if you never speak with them ever again in your life, they're never going to leave your heart uh, because they're always a part of you because you participated in that moment together. There's an old saying in baseball, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, sometimes it rains. For me, 2011 will always be about the rain. The Flying Squirrels were certainly not assured of a playoff position that season. It came right down to the final day in Altoona. We were playing okay up to that point in time. And it started raining. Hodges was up there, I think it was the eighth inning, and hit a ball down the right field line. Off the bat, it just looked like it was a sprayed foul ball up the first base line. The gust of wind kind of kept it fair, and it snuck inside the foul pole and just over the fence. It was almost like it was meant to be. With us taking the lead, the grounds crew is rushing out onto the field. There's monsoon-like rain starting to fall. Everybody's excited when the home run went over the fence, but uh, being the top half of the inning, nobody realized that uh, because the game was stopped and if the game wasn't to be continued, that it would officially count. And we're all trying to figure out whether or not it actually means we're going to win the game because there's no chance that we're going to continue with this game and it's on the final day of the season. It was a whole host of emotions. And then we went downstairs and we just waited. I mean, we waited and waited and waited and waited. They called it, we won. First time I ever had a walk-off, uh, you know, walk-off win on the road. All I remember is Haji's sprinting around the, <laughs> the clubhouse saying, I did it. And then he asked to actually put his hands on his head and actually goes, what did I just do? <laughs> and knowing that we were going to be in the playoffs and then uh, you know, the celebration afterward was crazy. And uh, uh, so much stuff we can't talk about, but we had a, <laughs> we had a good time anyway. <laughs> The team arrived after their champagne celebration in the Altoona Clubhouse, got over there and sat and watched it rain for three or four days. I can't even remember how many days it was, and there were all kinds of rumors going around about how we were going to try to play the next day, then we weren't, then we weren't ever going to be able to play there. Cards. We played <laughs> we played cards, man. We had to play all of our games here because we got flooded out of uh, Harrisburg. We were the, the visiting home team. <laughs> And they were comfortable with that because they knew that we would take care of them. Quite frankly, I think they knew that, that, that this place would be electric. The crowd noise is something I'll never forget because I've never ever played in front of that many people before. It really gives you a uh, chill sometimes when, when you hear it. The heart rate it was just unbelievable. I couldn't really, I couldn't really feel my, myself. <laughs> like, to be honest with you, and it was awesome and I'll never forget it. picked up uh, Stevenson. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know who he was, but uh, just the reports on him uh, were pretty good. Had no idea who the guy was. What a tremendous job he did in the playoffs and just so fiery and fun to play behind, you know? And for a guy that didn't throw over 85 miles an hour, he did a pretty good job. He wasn't an overpowering guy, but he had a great change up and uh, uh, it, that really was amazing. And, uh, you know, it, probably for him, uh, we made it as far as we did. I mean, this is going to sound kind of arrogant, but it looked pretty cool. On, Perez, I remember him just screaming, dive, dive, dive. And I think I already had plans of diving because I had no other choice. Well, Johnny Manel was a clutch hitter for me. He's a guy that uh, obviously got a chance to play in the big leagues. It didn't surprise me, but I was real excited for him. Those are things that uh, people will never take away from us, and they'll always have a special place in their heart. And you know, we always say around here, we're not in the baseball business, we're not in the entertainment business, we're in the memory making business. And certainly, playoff baseball uh, lends itself to many memories, especially if you end up with a rock on your finger.
Welcome back to FSI. We have, as you can see, taken it to FSI Field. We welcome in our James Limousine Luxury Player of the Week. Shortstop Matt Duffy, currently leading the Eastern League batting race. Duff, welcome. Thank you, Lace. Well, I just introduced you as Flying Squirrel Shortstop, and up until about a week ago, that would have been correct, but you haven't played shortstop in a week. You've been at second base. Actually, last night you made your debut at third base. I tweeted about it. It's not hard to read between the lines. The Giants are getting you ready, potentially, if they need you at the big league level. You came into this season. I struggled to use the word unheralded, but under the prospect radar a bit, how heady is some of the stuff that you're now being talked about? Um, it definitely opens your eyes a little bit. Um, at the same time, you can't really think too much on that stuff. Um, you know, you can't control whether or not they're going to, you know, pr prepare you for a call up or trade you or, um, you know, there's a bunch of different things that happen, can happen. I can end up staying here all year for all I know. So, um, you know, you can't focus too much on it. You just got to play the game. You seem to me to be a guy that's had to earn everything you've ever gotten in the game. Is that the chip that you carry with you? Uh, yeah, a little bit, definitely. I mean, I've never really been a physically intimidating guy on the field. Come on. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, flying under the radar to me is its something that I've kind of just dealt with, and um, I kind of enjoy it a little bit. I think I mentioned in an interview a while back that being like a Kyle Crick, you know, everybody kind of expects you to be this uh, godly type player, and, you know, that's not me. I think if someone were to come and see me on any given day, they wouldn't be too impressed, but it's, you know, kind of over the course of a week or so um, that I, I, I stand out. Duff is really the first guy where I get off the bus and I think I can relate to because we're not physically intimidating. You get off behind all these six foot four Greek god looking like, a, that's probably a conversation for another time. <laughs> yeah. But the problem that I've had this year is trying to not make it sound like I'm sucking up to you because it's hard not to talk positively about what you've done offensively. Really consistent from opening day till now. How do you maintain that consistency offensively? It's been impressive. Thank you. Um, I think the biggest is just controlling what I can in, in the box. Um, Focusing on, you know, what I do well, uh, seeing what a pitcher can't do well. If, if a guy can't throw a breaking ball for a strike, I'm not going to go up there looking for a breaking ball. Um, but yeah, I think uh, just controlling the positives and, and uh, controlling what I can and just seeing the ball and hitting it. And then if I'm struggling, trying to make an adjustment uh, from there. This is the great internal production that we have on FSI. We've got the guy who more than likely is going to set the Flying Squirrels record for average in a season. He's leading the Eastern League batting race, and we brought him here to do a defensive tutorial. But Duff, I think you're ready for that. I've brought your game glove here, and we're going to show the youngsters how to make that charging play off balance. You ready for that? Yes, I am. All right, Flying Squirrel shortstop Matt Duffy. We're going to continue to call him that because that's what we're going to show you from a tutorial perspective here in just a minute. Fortunate to have the Flying Squirrels leading offensive player to show you a little defense, and we do that as we kick out the chairs on FSI Field right after this. Welcome back to FSI here on FSI Field with our James Limousine Luxury Player of the Week shortstop Matt Duffy. We have placed Duff out where he feels most comfortable at short. And Duff, we're going to show our younger viewers how you make that play on the soft roller to you. But before we show them physically, I wanted you to just walk them through what you're thinking when you see the ball coming in your direction softly. Well, the biggest thing for me is the speed of the ball and uh, the speed of the runner determines how much time I have to throw the ball to first base and whether I can set my feet a little bit. Um, or if I have to get rid of the ball really quick. For me, I like to throw a little more sidearm because on the run, making a throw over the top, it's just your body doesn't typically work that way very well. At least mine doesn't. So uh, I have a tendency to spike the ball on that one. So on, on the run, throwing sidearm for me is the most natural for my body. And uh, for most kids, I feel you have to practice and practice to get that feel of what their body does the best. All right, well, let's show our younger viewers that. And what we want you to display for them, Duff, is how you're already getting in a throwing position as you're fielding. And here comes ground ball number one. So as you can see, he's kind of already tilted. Jay Burnham over there. We will give you the caveat that Jay is left-handed, so he dropped that one completely. Not to worry, Jay, we've got more baseballs. Let's see that one more time. And again, notice how he's already tilting to get ready for that throw. 
as he's fielding this ground ball. See, so already horizontal to the ground there and pointing to the target with the shoulder, even though he's not from that over the top position, which is his normal throw towards first base. One last time with shortstop and batting race leader Matt Duffy on this slow roller before we chop one out to Matt here and make it a little more difficult on him. There we go. Jay's got that one secured. All right, Duff, now you were talking about the difference between that kind of swinging bunt slow roller and then the chopper. Which one is more difficult for you to feel? I would say the swinging bunt because it's, you're feeling the ball from a lower position and most of the time you have less time on that ball. Uh, the chopper is kind of already in a spot where when you're throwing from here, it's an easier transfer. So I would say the throw is, is easier on the, the chopper because the ball is kind of set up in a good spot for you to throw from already. All right, we're going to do the chopper real quick as we close out with James Limousine, Luxury Player of the Week, Matt Duffy. And Duff, I do want to add this. No pressure. We did this tutorial once a couple seasons ago with Brandon Crawford. All right, okay. here we go. We still have that footage, by the way. So this one chopped a little bit more for Matt coming in. See how he fielded that at the belt. Still went a little bit sidearm. Probably not quite as necessary to do so, but that's where he feels comfortable throwing the baseball. We have much appreciation for all the guys who have joined us for tutorials here on FSI Field. Matt Duffy taking time out in what is a very short and abbreviated homestand for the Flying Squirrels. He's had a tremendous year. We look for more from him as indeed the Flying Squirrels push towards the 2014 Eastern League playoffs. A lot of fun today on behalf of our entire FSI team. I'm John Lazer saying we'll see you at the Diamond and until next time. So long everybody. Production funding for Flying Squirrels Insider is made possible in part by the all-new 2015 GMC Yukon, offering professional grade design and functionality. The all-new 2015 GMC Yukon, now available at Richmond area GMC dealers. Dan Doherty at Colonial First Mortgage, assisting customers with home purchasing and mortgage refinancing online at colonial1mtg.com and by phone at 804-218-4444. And James Limousine, driven to serve Richmond for 22 years. JamesLimousine.com, 804-273-1540.